Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, I'll be taking a look at one of the very first custom suits that I ever had made, how well it's aged over the years, what I still like about it, and what I would change in the future. <laughs> This video has been shaped by you guys. During our previous live streams, we've received a lot of questions and requests to show off a lot of our very first pieces of custom made clothing. And we also thought it was a great idea. So whilst you'll be seeing my suit today, there's no stopping you from requesting that Raphael, Preston, or Nathan do the same in a future video. Come on, go to the comments, you know you want to. Plus I'm told our script editors like videos like these because they don't have to do a ton of research. Well, with all jokes aside, let's get started. First off, I wanna clarify what kind of custom suit this is. Now the one we'll be reviewing today is a made to order suit from Indochino. Why is it important for us to clarify that? Well, as Preston has discussed in this video, the word custom is a pretty large umbrella term where no two items labeled as custom are going to be of the same quality. So I wanna be completely clear with you guys. This is not a fully bespoke suit from a Savile Row tailor, but at the same time, it's not a readily available off the rack suit either. For most of us with an interest in classic tailoring or clothing, made to order is the first big leap or upgrade. It's sort of the next step in terms of suiting from having only purchased maybe ready to wear off the rack clothing. It certainly was for me too. And if you're on that journey as well, I hope you get some helpful tips out of this video. I also wanted to let you know that this isn't my actual very first custom suit. That suit was actually a solid navy blue from Brooks Brothers. But as it completely does not fit anymore, it didn't feel like the best fit to talk about in this video. Because while I could talk about the details from that suit, I stopped wearing it a very long time ago. And that wouldn't make for an accurate assessment. Okay, now that we've covered that ground, let's take a quick look at the brand that made my suit. Indochino was founded in 2007 by Heikel Ghani and Kyle Vuko, with Drew Green replacing Kyle Vuko after he stepped down in 2015. And before you ask, no, I did not change my name. Originally, the company was online only, specializing in made-to-measure and made-to-order clothing, focusing on affordability. It was one of the first companies to do so with its level of success. And now, this is still the case today, as Indochino has opened around 50 brick-and-mortar stores in the U.S. and Canada, including Vancouver, where their headquarters are based. As of 2021, Indochino has also partnered with the department store Nordstrom, where over 20 locations now bear an in-store Indochino. So as much as we live in a generally casual world, it's pretty great news that people still want access to tailored clothing. Since the company launched, they've been a big point of conversation in the menswear world, with some people raving about how good their products are, and others somewhat skeptical about the whole operation. Because of their overall affordability marketing, they certainly are a great place for us menswear enthusiasts to take a look. But not everyone is convinced that Indochino can offer great quality at a low cost. This video is not a direct review of Indochino as a brand, partially because there are so many Indochino reviews out there, but mainly because this is one of my oldest custom suits. And I wanted to share my honest thoughts and feelings about one of my first custom clothing experiences as five years has passed. Because a lot of the other reviews out there are done with almost no time in between receiving the product and then talking about it, which isn't a very accurate representation of actually getting a suit and wearing it in a very real life way. So without further ado, let's look at the suit itself. The suit is a made to order, double breasted, three piece suit. Now when I ordered the suit, which was about five years ago, I believe it cost around $800. I chose to have it made in a navy wool pinstripe. I chose this because I wanted to feel warm in the fall and winter months and to have something that was sturdy and sophisticated anytime I decided to wear it. The jacket is constructed in a traditional six by two stance with lapels that are not too wide. Now, as you know from the AMA video and my live stream, I prefer a more modern silhouette and a slightly slimmer lapel fits my style well. On the lapel, you'll notice I have a slightly lighter color around the buttonhole. Now, while it's not everybody's choice, I like it because it helps me to stand out and I don't always like to have a boutonniere on. So there's something a little bit more unique to me and my personality on that jacket. And I continue this theme onto the last buttonhole on my working surgeon's cuffs. I went with surgeon's cuffs because I like subtle details and something that's unique and something that you might not normally find off the rack. And of course, to walk around with the last button open on your sleeve and be able to show off a watch or the shirt cuff color is always important to me as well. Now the jacket is lined in a paisley pattern and I like that I chose this initially because it gives a sort of business in the front party in the back kind of a vibe and I am able to wear the jacket opened completely when walking down the street and have the color pop but at the same time I can keep it buttoned up and it's just personal and something that's meaningful to me but it's not in everyone's face which I like. Now the rest of the jacket is quite traditional and it has double vents in the rear, a straight welted breast pocket and flapped hip pockets that are cut at an angle. 
Now moving on to the waistcoat beneath the jacket, you'll start to see some additional interesting details. Now just like the jacket, it's a double-breasted closure, but unlike the jacket, it doesn't have lapels. Instead, you can see a horseshoe-shaped form with the overlapping sides of the waistcoat wrap over each other. Now I thought that this was a great choice because it allows you to bring something simple and unique to your vest that you might not normally see outside of a made-to-measure or a custom vest option. And I liked how when I would take off my jacket, by wearing the vest, I would still feel put together and not underdressed. Now, otherwise, in the waistcoat, it has a paisley lining, two pockets, and a black belt. And finally, the suit trousers. Now, unlike Raphael, I'm not a big fan of pleats. So instead, I chose to have my trousers feature a flat front finish with a side tab closure and no cuff. Now, why did I choose to go double-breasted? In short, it remains one of my favorite suit jacket features. As our world gets more and more casual with all of its style choices, I do find that the double-breasted feature on a suit jacket is iconic, sophisticated, and is always a head-turner. I also find that the double-breasted option looks great on someone with broad shoulders and chest as well. What's the reason behind making it a three-piece suit? Well, I really like the option to always appear dressed or put together, even if I decided to remove my suit jacket. Now, why did I choose that particular fabric? Now, although some might choose to wear the suit fabric for year-round wear, I chose it because of its sturdy, heftier feel, and it seemed like it would be something that I could wear in the cooler months, but I have worn it at almost all times throughout the year except for summer. Now, why did I choose this color and pattern? Its classic appearance reminds me of old films and the way gentlemen used to dress. And I find that that classic appearance gives me a great foundation to add even more of my own personality through things like cufflinks, ties, or pocket squares, just like the kind you can get at Fort Belvedere. Were there any specific details that I wanted on the suit? And if so, why? The contrasting buttonhole thread. I wanted it for its unique appearance and for the versatility to be able to mix and match with other colors and different outfits in the future. Now, what do I still love about this suit? I really like the color and pattern that I chose. It feels true to me, true to my personality, and something that is quite timeless. The double-breasted feature on the suit jacket is still a big favorite of mine. It's one of my all-time favorite go-tos on suit jackets. I think it complements me well, and although I sometimes wear non-double-breasted suit jackets, I don't wear that all the time, I could definitely see myself making the same choice if I were to remake this suit today. What would I change about the suit today? Overall, I'm not thrilled with the side tab closure. It certainly works and is quite clean in appearance when your shirt is tucked in, but as my weight has fluctuated over the years, it has become less effective as opposed to had I chosen belt loops. If I were to order the suit again today, what would I do differently? It would be to purchase the trousers with belt loops or to at least purchase a second pair of trousers that have belt loops. And I would probably choose to have the same color and pattern choice, but in a lighter weight fabric. I can sometimes get a little too hot too quickly. So there we have it. One of my very first custom suits put under the microscope. Well, I hope you all enjoyed it. And I wonder, what was your very first custom suit experience like? Go ahead, let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to see anyone else at the Gentleman's Gazette talk about their first custom suit orders, let us know who in the comments below as well. So today I'm wearing a slate gray wool turtleneck with the navy wool and striped suit trousers, as well as a pair of chocolate brown Chelsea boots and a pair of brown shadow stripe Fort Belvedere socks. Check out the Fort Belvedere shop here for socks like these. <laughs> Thank you.